Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. Although I can't see you, I could see you, and now I can't. So I'm a little concerned that something's gone wrong, but I'm live. So hopefully, um, you'll be able to come back because I want to show you how to make pineapple upside down cake without an oven. It's pretty simple, really, and good fun. So let me just move the laptop out of the way and oh sorry guys I'll just stretch it up so I can see the comments and I'll give you all a few seconds to get over again and find out where we are here we go hi joy glad you're all there I had a whole big long list of people and they just went sure so pineapple upside down cake is an old-fashioned sort of cake I guess um I remember uh, helping my mum make it, but I was only a little girl. I was probably only six or seven, so it was in the 1960s, maybe the early 70s. It was a trendy sort of cake to make and rather a special dessert um, to have when you had guests. And I remember it seemed to take mum ages to do and it was fiddling, whatever. So this one is really super quick not fiddly at all and here we go here's one i made before can you see it now there's no cherries in this one because i couldn't find them we, we have heaps of cherries somewhere i couldn't find them so i wanted to do one to show you what it looks like cooked this is it tastes really good this one's super simple and I did it in the, where are you, the pie maker. Ah, oh, Hannah found the cherries. See, you've got to have a daughter. She finds the cherries for you. These are just Aldi cherries that we got Christmas time. Yes, but I don't think they were a special buy. No, they're probably, I think they're now um, part, of the range. part of the range. So, and they at the time were cheaper than what I could get from Hindu Stand Imports, which is why we got these ones. Anyway. I still don't have the ovens. We're still in the old kitchen. We will be for a couple more weeks. That's fine. We haven't had working ovens since early November, early to mid-November, and we've been oh, doing okay. Luckily, I made the Christmas cakes in October. Otherwise, we might not have been doing okay, but we're doing okay. So the other week, though, I really wanted pie. I really wanted a pie. And I mean, we couldn't even buy frozen pies and heat them where well, you could in the microwave, but I don't like those, heat them in the oven because it just doesn't work. So Hannah and I were in Kmart and I know it's no spending month, but they had these family size pie makers marked down to $15. So I ummed and ahed and thought about it and I had a look at it and I thought, well, it really doesn't look like a family, family, not size family size pie I would normally make so maybe I'd have to do two for the five of us or something and I thought $15 I will buy it if it's no good I haven't wasted that much money oh my goodness folks it is amazing what have we made in it so far pineapple upside down cake pie delicious meat pie and one of them trust me plenty big enough for our family of five more than big enough it was and it was the pastry was divine. I'll give you a tip about that in a minute. Um, quiche. quiche. Cakes. And cakes, um, vanilla cakes. Hannah did a beautiful um, chocolate layer cake. We had visitors last weekend. Hannah did a beautiful chocolate layer cake in the pie maker. So not having an oven. Good for layer cakes. Put a cramp in our baking for a couple of months, but now we're sort of coming around to it. Anyway. Pineapple upside down cake. Now, this one was so simple. I'll leave that there for you. I've gone ahead and because I was doing it, I've pre-done the batter. I'm just going to plug this in so I can warm it up a bit. Um, there we go. And I'm going to move it closer because I, actually before I plug it in, I'm going to put some baking paper in the bottom of it. Now, when you're doing an ordinary pie, you don't need to do the baking paper trick. Where is it? 
but I figured with the pineapple upside down cake, because of the brown sugar and the pineapple and the caramelization and stuff, I thought I might like to line it first. So, ouch. there we go. I cut a piece of baking paper, you can see that, um, to fit the base. Now, this is, this is actually a gluten-free, an Aldi gluten-free um, cake mix that I've got here. But you could use any cake recipe. But this is a vanilla one. So put that in there, give it a bit of a stir because I don't really want to. Now, ah! to plug it in. Yep, plug it in. I don't want to plug it in until I put the pineapple in. Where's the pineapple? Okay, move this over here again so you can see. Pineapple goes in the bottom. Now, again, it's just Aldi pineapple in juice, not syrup. And this one I figured, <coughs> excuse me, folks. <coughs> Sorry. This one takes three and a half slices of pineapple. I'll show you how I do it. But before we do that, we're going to put in... There's my dessert spoon. Two, two, maybe three. There we go. Good spoonfuls of brown sugar in the base. Okay, just spread it around. Then you're going to dot that with a little bit of butter. Now, I didn't use much butter. I took some off a teaspoon and I just sort of went just dot and dropped it on you don't need a lot just spread it around a bit okay because I figure there's enough fat in the cake all righty then you lay in your pineapple now I've had the pineapple draining um for a while so one in the middle and then I just sort of went round the outsides. You can do it whatever way you like. You want to be fancy and put a pattern in. But this was the way I got it to fit. So it worked like this. Now, there we go. Just like so. I had washed my hands before we started, just in case somebody is worried. Rip this off. And now I can't get it open. Oh, gosh. Okay. okay. Cherry in the middle. I just chopped them in half, I suppose, for the half circles, but seriously, folks, can't, oops, can't be bothered. Now. Hello, Julie. Hello, Maureen. Hello, Kathleen. Hello, Catherine. Hello. Oh, hello, Pam. Hello, Judy. I can hear you and see you, Kath. Oh, good. Thank you. You're missing one. I'm missing one. Did I miss one? Oh, I did. Sorry. Well, that could have been yours. I don't like the cake anymore. Um, okay. Got food in that. So, plug in. The only thing with this, it doesn't have an on-off switch, so you do have to plug it in. Not to worry. Take a scoop of batter. Plonk it in and about a half scoop and plonk it in. Now that's just my soup ladle, so that's whatever. Takes about a cup. Spread it round. Right. Okay. Losing the losing the cherry. Okay. There we go. Pop the lid down. It does click shut and I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. There we go. So while we're waiting for that to um, cook, that's how easy it is. Um, I'll give you some tips. If you're doing pastry in it for a pie, blind bake the base first now that just means i just used some baking paper and some rice uh kidney beans i had a bag of kidney beans that i poured in so um put your pastry base in the machine 
It comes with cutters, so you've got a base and a top, so you're not eyeballing the size. Put your base in, line it with baking paper, put your beans or your rice in to fill it up, pop the lid down, set the timer for five minutes. Cook it for five minutes, take your beans and rice and baking paper out, put your filling in, put your top on, pop the lid down, and it takes about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how much filling you've got in there and what the filling is, obviously. It's starting to sizzle. Can you hear it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that just gives a really nice base to the pie. It's um, The pastry stays nice and crisp and doesn't go soggy. Um, you don't need to grease it. Um, pies lift out. I just use my... A little spatula. Here's my little spatula. Pies lift out really easily with that. When I'll show you how I get the cake out. It's slightly different um, to get the cakes out. But that works really well. When you're doing quiche, do the same thing. Blind bake the base and then... Remember you take and turn it off for five minutes before you take it out? Yeah. With the pie too. So, all right. Sorry, Hannah just reminded me. When you're doing a pie or a quiche, once the um, 10 minutes cooking time is up, turn it off, leave the lid down for five minutes before you take it out of the machine. Um, when you're doing quiche, blind bake the pastry. the pastry base the same as you do for a meat, uh, pastry based pie. Put your filling in, put the lid down, leave it for, took a bit longer in the quiche, didn't it? Took about 15 minutes and then five minutes to cook. Yeah, it took about 15 minutes to set the filling and then you leave the lid down for the other five minutes. So 20 minutes cooking time all up. That's cute. And it, it really is delicious. Really nice way to make quiche. So quick um, and easy? Well, that's slightly faster than using the oven to make quiche. Uh, yep, so... Have you tried toffee cherry upside down cake instead of the pineapple? Use chopped cherries. Ooh, ooh, that might be nice. You might like that one better. Mm, Hannah's not a fan of the pineapple, which is fine. The boys will eat it. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. so that's it. Joy, that sounds really good. Mm, what you can bring to cards? <laughs> Did you hear that? Hannah said that's what you can bring to cards. Okay. So, um, what else have we done? Oh, the great one packet mix or one the equivalent of one packet mix of cake will make three, 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 three cakes. So you can do a layer cake really easily. Um, I had a visitor this afternoon, so Hannah last night made a couple of different cakes. She made a tiramisu cake last night. I'll give you that recipe in a minute. And there was some spare, so there were two spare. So I made a passion fruit, not quite sponge because it wasn't a sponge cake, but had the base. So I spread some jam on it and some cream and then made the passion fruit icing and popped it on top. Yum. It was a nice um, afternoon tea treat. I can hear it bubbling and I want to lift the lid, but you're not allowed to lift the lid. So let me move this out of the way. Okay. Um, Will the recipe be posted later? The, for the pineapple upside down cake, I can post the recipe for you, yes. It's really easy though. Use either a vanilla cake mix or your own cake mix. Now, if you, I'm using the gluten-free one because that's what we had and I was in a bit of a rush. But... Normally, I would make my own, and it's really simple because my own basic cake I've shared with you before, it's the one I use to do the moo packet mixes, would be fine to use like this. You don't need to use a packet mix if you don't want to. Um, it's gone out of my head because I'm doing my packet mixes. So... Ah, can't think. Sorry, folks. Old age or something's creeping up on me. This crazy weather. 
Did you get rain? We had thunder today. Rain. Someone had hail. I know. Close by there was hailstones the size of moon rocks or something ridiculous. Yeah. Lorraine wants to know what are you using? Lorraine, this is the Kmart Family Pie Maker that I bought. Um, it was reduced to clear, so I bought it for $15. Now, apparently... That's $15 ever. It has, it's a really good for, for us. It's been a great investment. Apparently, they were originally $29 or $30. And almost straight away when they were released, they dropped them to reduce to clear for $15. Now, they've been coming and going for months apparently. Well, our local Kmart had heaps the other day when we were there. And because we don't have the ovens in yet, the kitchen hasn't been finished or even it's all in flux, I bought one to try and I figured it was only $15. If I had to donate it to the op shop, then, you know, I, it was only $15. But honestly, it's been worth the $15. We've done meat pie, quiches, two quiches, three quiches. Some water. Um, in it cakes ordinary like chocolate cake uh, a vanilla cake a couple of plain butter cakes it's really handy i like the cakes in it because unlike doing them in my regular cake tin where you use a whole cake mix in one cake tin one cake mix will do three cakes in this now not that i begrudge my family eating the cake they don't need a lot of it. So doing a cake in this, putting a bit of icing on it is still a decent um, morning tea or afternoon tea or dessert if they want dessert. So I'm figuring if I can get three from one, it's really happy. Now it only takes 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes to cook a cake. This one's the pineapple upside down cake. It's going to take about 10 minutes. Then we'll let it sit for a few minutes. I didn't let this one sit for the full five minutes because I didn't want the um, toffee to start sticking on the bottom of the pie maker or to the baking paper. All right. Okay. Kathleen, really good for summertime baking. Now, if we had this when it was like 43 and 44 degrees and the day it got up to 46 here, it was just a nightmare, it would have been brilliant. And the best thing, I think, I don't know about you, but being electric, I can just plug it in out on our veranda <laughs> and cook outside, which in summer, a lot of things, a lot of electrical things get plugged in out on our veranda. The slow cooker, the dehydrator goes out there, all sorts of things get plugged in out on the veranda so that we're still getting the stuff. And even though it probably wouldn't heat up the um, kitchen as much as the oven would, it still would add a bit of heat, but it's outside, so it doesn't matter. Now, that's what I was going to say. This, if you just want to make one pie or you just want to do a quick cake or a quick quiche, this is a much better option, I think, than heating up the whole oven to do just a quiche or just a pie. I was listening to, uh, I can't remember who, someone on YouTube, um, and they were saying they just couldn't understand why people used the slow cooker because it had to be on all day. They'd much rather just put their piece of meat in the oven for a couple of hours well, I had to stop and think. My slow cooker might go for eight hours, but it doesn't use half the electricity that the oven would use if it's on for it's two hours. Ready. So, you can hear it? It's almost ready. It's making the noise. Yep. Um, it doesn't, you know, so think about those things too. If there's just one or two of you, it's a better option than putting the oven on. If you need something in a hurry for a lunch, it's a better option than putting the oven on. Now, I haven't tried it, but I also think it would be really good for reheating um, quiche or pie rather than putting the oven on. Right. So yeah, yeah. put your cold piece of 
pine or your cold tiche, turn it on, but only for a few minutes. You'd only need five minutes. There we go. I'll turn this off because did you hear the dinger? Ten minutes is up. Turn it off for a few minutes. Um, a much better option than putting the oven on and nicer. The end result is nicer than putting it in the microwave because the microwave, if you wrap it in paper towel, tip it upside down, put it on a, a pastry rack in the microwave, it still goes soggy. So this way, it doesn't. Okay. Um, Lorraine, depends on the cake. Plain cakes freeze really well. Fruit cakes freeze really well. Banana cake, zucchini cake, carrot cake, anything like that will freeze. Um, if you're going to freeze them, try and freeze them uniced and unfilled. You can freeze filled cakes as in filled with jam and cream or something. But you probably, mm, they thought okay, but it's better if you just freeze the cake and then ice it and jam it or whatever before before you serve it, once it's thawed. Now, I've got my trusty coconut here. This, this is the tricky bit, so bear with me. While we take it out, oh, let's see if it's cooked all the way through. Yep, perfect. Okay, this is how I got it out last time. I don't know how you're supposed to get it out. This is how I did it. Now you need oven mitts because the outside is hot. Let me. We'll flip it over because I lined it with baking paper. It has ta -da, ta -da. There. oh no, it's a carnage. It's all down the back. Oh, yeah, that'll clean up. Okay, let me take the baking paper off. Might do it this way. Wasn't thinking. Ah, yum. Yum, yum, bubble gum. Ouch, that's hot too. Then your fingers. Hey, because it's sugar. Because it's sugar, that's right. Here you go. Pineapple upside down cake. Now, it didn't rise very high, but I don't remember my mother's pineapple upside down cakes being very high. She used to do them in a, a long pan, so they were never much higher than that. There you go. How easy was that? So easy. And I'm going to try Joy's um, almonds and um, cherries and see how that turns out. Now, just let me get a cloth and I'll show you how easy it is to clean this thing up. Wet dishcloth. I'm cleaning it while it's hot. Because of the toffee, I don't want the toffee, so I'll hold that to get sticky like it has there because then I'll have to scrub it. And I'm not a fan of scrubbing. There we go. Turn it down. Oh, it comes beautiful. Same deal on the inside. Whatever you've cooked in it, just... Give it a wipe over. It's really non-stick. It's a, it's, a, it's a great non-stick um, surface on it. There's not even the cheese no. stuck to it when we did the quiche. Um, there we go. Now it gets really, really hot, so don't forget to use a pot mitt to rid it. There we go. Now, let's clean the toffee off the bench. And it's all done. How easy was that, folks? Now, I haven't costed it out, but a cake mix is uh, 64 cents. Yeah. Two eggs is about 50 cents. So that's a dollar, so $1.15. 
tin of pineapples gone up to a dollar twenty nine, but you're only using less than half a can, so that's sixty, so that's a dollar seventy five, and some cherries. So maybe a dollar eighty, under two dollars anyway, to make a pineapple upside down cake. If you're going to use it for dessert, well, that cherry got buried. If you're going to use it for a dessert, let it cool, cut it into your wedges, put it on a plate, a little bit of um, whipped cream on the side, grate some chocolate over it, looks really special. Some will think you've gone and spent hours and hours and hours in the kitchen. Could you turn that into a layer cake with just the base as a normal vanilla cake? Then some whipped cream with some crushed pineapple in it. Then you put that on top with squirts of whipped cream on top. Oh, I don't know why you're not in the cake making business, my darling. Because I don't like the grating. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a good idea. Make two, so you've got your plain you base, pineapple kind of upside it. down cake. Um, pineapple whipped cream on the base, pop your lid on, and away you go. It's another nice dessert. And doing that, um, you can cut it into smaller pieces. You won't need as as big a, a as big a piece for impact. Hmm. Now let me get rid of this, and I'll tell you about Hannah's tiramisu cake. Do you have a oh, And a sticky folks. All right. So on last night. Oh, was it last night? Yeah. Oh, it was too. While well, you were baking. Okay. She made vanilla cakes. Let them cool, put one down as the base, made coffee cream, mm -hmm. filled it with coffee cream, put the lid on, a little bit of coffee cream on the top. She was talking about it later on and went, should have drizzled it with Kahlua. Kahlua. Well, so then it would have really been a tiramisu cake. It was delicious. Really, really nice and really, really easy. Oh, no. Oh, they've got to go in the wash anyway. So. Not my one. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Uh, yes, Bob, if you've got a, a regular pie maker, whether it's a two or the four, one pineapple ring in the base. Brown, one tablespoon of brown sugar, a little dob, about a quarter teaspoon of butter, pineapple ring, cherry, and I think it's about half a cup of batter or a quarter of a cup of batter. I can't remember. Whatever your pie maker recipe, whatever your pie maker says for the filling in it, put the lid down and it will take eight, about eight minutes um, to do a single one. Now, I do remember when I did the pie maker show last year talking about how I could never understand how anyone could possibly make cupcakes in their pie maker. <laughs> and I probably hmm, still don't really understand why you would do it as a regular thing when you can fill up a tray of 12, put them in the oven and have 12 done in the same time as you get four. But when you don't have an oven, you do what you need to do. And that works really well too. So... I dry, um, nearly bought one on Friday. <laughs> well, Judy, only if you use it. If you're not going to use it, it will be a cover filler. And I will say, I when I looked at it, when we got it home, well, I looked at it in the store and thought, it's not really a family size pie. It is. I brought it home made two meat pies in it and then went, you yeah, know, one would have been plenty for us. It's um, amazingly deceptive. Doesn't look big, doesn't look deep. But, oh. Yeah, it doesn't look really round and it doesn't look terribly deep, but it certainly is a big enough pie for the five of us. So, and bear in mind, my boys and Wayne sort of, like their food so um, it worked well 
that's my review of the Kmart pie maker. That's my pineapple upside down cake. I'm really impressed. I'm glad I bought it. It um, yeah. has only been put away once and then came straight back out again because we keep thinking of things that we can do in it. I thought um, today being Pancake Tuesday, did you all have pancakes oh, for pancake breakfast Tuesday. or lunch or afternoon tea or dessert or something? I posted pancake recipes all day on Facebook. Didn't um, Pancake Tuesday, yep, tomorrow's double end. I thought this would be ideal for crepes. I haven't tried it. Too hard to get out. Because someone said it would be too hard to get out. But, okay, pour your batter in for your crepe, baking paper over the top, pop your lid down. When it's done, tip it upside down. It falls onto the baking paper. You slide it out, slide it off, and repeat. Haven't tried it yet, so I may try that because um, I posted the recipe for chicken um, chicken crepes, and oh, they're so good. And I've been thinking about them since um, Monday. So I might be trying that. I'll let you know on Thursday if I do try that. But crepes would be good. Um, pancakes, regular pancakes would be good too. You make the big ones and you can do the stack. Now that makes a really good um, birthday breakfast cake. Do big pancakes. Layer them up, probably four or five, maybe six deep. You just layer them on top of each other. Drizzle them with maple syrup and cut them into wedges to serve is um, nice. Um, just a different way to do something if you want to do something special. I keep playing with this because I'm trying to get it to cool down a bit. But anyway, so uh, um, all my posts today have, on Facebook have been about pancakes. Started this morning with hot cakes, then there was pancake syrup. Um, there was the chicken and mushroom crepes, um, apple pancakes this afternoon. Dutch pancakes? Um, no, I didn't do the Dutch ones. Um, yeah. What meat do I use in my family meat pies? Mince. I had a nice chicken and veggie pie for lunch. Can we have that one now? Maybe. Um, mince. I just use mince in my meat pies. Um, I cook it up. I brown it and I drain it. I do that with all the mince. I don't, I don't like greasy meat. So the mince gets browned. And then it gets put into the colander and rinsed under hot water. Let it drain till it's dry back into the cleaned out pan because I wipe the pan out so that it's not greasy. I don't like greasy, fatty food. So I just use mince. And then for my basic everyday regular meat pie that I do all the time, it's mince, onion, carrot, celery, turnip or swede, whichever you can find. Um, packet of cream of mushroom soup. Now that's getting really hard to find, so I just use my dried mushrooms and I throw in a little um, garlic powder and some, about a quarter cup of milk powder. Then I add a good squirt because this is a technical recipe, a good squirt of regular tomato sauce and a good teaspoon of Vegemite, Marmite, Promite, Mighty Mite, whatever you've got. Cook it all up. I add probably about a cup, a cup and a half of water to that. Cook it all up till the veggies are nice and soft. Turn it off, let it go cold, and that's my pie filling. That's the pie filling I have made for... 31 years. Now, if I'm doing a vegetarian version of that, same veggies and seasonings and whatever, I just replace the mince with a tin of mashed nut meat, sanitarium nut meat, to do the vegetarian version. 
it's really good. It's really, really good. Um, now that makes really nice pies. It makes really nice jackals. You can serve it on toast, a stew on toast if you want to. Use it for um, pancake fillings, not crepes. Crepes are too thin, but regular pancakes make re are really good if you can fill them just a little bit, probably tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half, and roll them over. Um, then you can make a mushroom gravy, bake them in the oven. That's a really good filling for those. It's very versatile, the pie filling I make, and everyone likes it. Oh, and Worcester sauce, Worcestershire sauce. Again, technical, a good slurp. I'll show you my jar, my bottle, if I can find it. Isn't that too far back? Can't reach it. But I um, use a one-and-a-half-litre Ocean Spray cranberry drink bottle that I got off Mum. It's one of the old glass ones for the Worcestershire sauce. So I get that, give it a shake, it just goes, that looks like enough. No, maybe a bit more. So it's very technical measuring, but to taste. And it works. It just works really well. Um, okay. Oh. On barbecue. Yeah, that's a good idea. Susan, which meat? Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Can't read them up. Um, Joy. And you know, he's a boy, so you, Joy says Ron would like the pancake stack with it. You could make them blue and and had blueberries with them. Do blueberries in the maple syrup, warm it up, pour them over. For one of the girls, you can make pink ones, have pink pancakes on their birthdays. You've got to do these things. I don't have pink pancakes for you. No, I don't make pink pancakes for you anymore. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, folks. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Joy, the apple pancakes are more just like, yeah, probably a bit like sort of the texture of corn fritters but with apple, if that makes sense. So not like the apple fritters where you batter the apple, but, yeah, a bit like the texture of um, corn fritters. Okay. One of that. Uh, okay. Um, alrighty, folks. Um, <laughs> so, Joy, when you make your husband blue pancakes for his birthday, don't blame, don't mention my name. <laughs> I don't need to be blamed for that. I can get into enough trouble. Um, okay. Alrighty. So, folks, um, sorry, um, there you go. That's it. Upside pineapple upside down cake without an oven, the easy way. Um, you can make it now. Sorry, just before I go, I've made it in the pie maker because I don't have an oven. You can make it in a regular oven, and if you do, same mix, same laid out, put it into either a round or an oblong tray, um, still the brown sugar, the dot it with the butter, put your pineapple down, put your cherries in, spread your batter on top. Now, if you're going to do that, you might as well just use the whole batter, so you'll need a bigger tin, obviously. Preheat your oven. Remember, you're baking something. You want it to start cooking as soon as it goes into that oven, so the oven needs to be at the right temperature. Preheat your oven to about 180 170 to 180, pop it in and it will take 25 to 30 minutes. I'd check it after 20 minutes just to see how it's going. You don't want to um, overcook your cake because it will be dry. There you go. So you can do it in the conventional oven too. It's just we don't have one at the moment. And, you know, if you're caravanning or um, camping, Make your pie maker and you can make pie and you can make pineapple upside down cake. You don't have to have a campfire for the coals for the um, campfire. So. <laughs> oh, 
That's very kind. Joy, I have to tell you, we have neighbours that have fruit trees and the fruit hangs over our fence and they know we pick it. And I've been eyeing off these oranges. Can you go and get those oranges out of the box? Eyeing off these oranges for about two weeks, thinking perfect for marmalade, perfect for marmalade. I couldn't reach them. Finally remembered the other day I was out with Wayne and said to him, sweetheart, could you grab those oranges for me off the tree? And he went, mm, I don't think they're going to be very good because see the size of them? They're mandarins. They're not oranges. They're mandarins. They're really nice. We've been eating them. But I, I'm sure I've had oranges off that tree to make marmalade before. But no, they're giant mandarins, so I'm not sure what's in the soil around here lately because have you seen the size of the tomatoes I've been getting? They are monsters. But yeah, big mandarin. They smell delicious. Look at the tomatoes. Look at them. This is today's today's pickings. Look at the size of that. They're huge. They're ginormous. They are ginormous. I weighed one the other day. It was 438 grams. It, one tomato was enough to give all of us tomato on our salads and I still had some left for my sandwich the next day. How funny is that? So I don't know what's in the soil, what's in the water, what's going on, but everything is turning out huge and not just for us. So there we go. All righty. Um, apple pancakes and they're totally different. Yeah, yeah, fritters are different, pancakes. Did anyone see, hmm, is it My Kitchen, it's My Kitchen Rules that's on at the moment, isn't it? With the two ladies that made the banana fritters and they were the little, tiny little, three little things on a plate, I wondered, I just saw the ad, I wondered how they turned out. I'll have to look up how they made them. So, Ooh, cheese and tomato pie in the pie maker. Ooh, I did think about um, egg and bacon pie would be really good in there. Um, anything like that would be great in the pie maker. Mm. Um, I haven't tried it because oh, we haven't had, you know, I've been experimenting, but mum used to make, a pie that was pastry, it was short cross pastry, and then caramel, and then she put she put it in the oven and bake it so the caramel was really, really caramely, and then she'd bring it out, and when it was cool, she put chopped up red jelly on the top. Now, when we were kids, we thought that was the best dessert in the whole world. We loved it. So I thought, well, I could try that in here too. It would be too hot for pavlova, Kathleen. It gets really, really hot. So pavs and meringues need low, slow cooking. Um, so, yeah, it would be too hot. I don't know how you'd go. Maybe a lemon meringue or a chocolate meringue might work in it. I've got to stop doing that. But I haven't tried it. I could because Wayne loved lemon meringue, but I'm thinking that it would be too hot for the meringue. It would burn before it's set. Yeah. So, um, cheese and onion, cheese and tomato, egg and bacon made with, yeah, whole eggs and bacon rashes. Mum used to do, if mum was doing an egg and bacon pie, she did the pastry and then she put the bacon in. And then she just cracked the eggs in, however many people she wanted to feed. So if there was four or six or eight or whatever, that's how many eggs she'd put in and she'd slap the top on and she'd bake it and she'd cut it into wedges according to the egg. So you've got sort of a wedge of pie with a bit of egg in it and around the corner you've got pasty. I had thought I might try my Cornish pasty recipe in here and see how it goes. It would be... Um, pasty pie but who knows it would work um so you know likes to cook we go and came out air fryer i'm oh, cool oh 
Oh, Catherine, that's really nice. To, that's, a, that's a good endorsement too. And it's really nice that you have a son, a teenager, that likes to cook. Woo! Like, yeah, that's lovely. That's really nice. Spinach and ricotta pie, yeah. Look, ooh, says Hannah. The idea is you're limited by your imagination, I would think, but it's really simple to use. It's really easy to clean. As I said, my only... Um, issue with it so far is it doesn't have an on off switch you have to plug it in or unplug it well i think um, maker doesn't no i don't know why they don't come with on off switches but anyway maybe that would add a few dollars to the maybe they do toasted sandwich makers no yeah. they all mm. just sort of warm up and stay hot so anyway there we go now what is the best pastry to use or does it vary according to it right okay for <laughs> Okay, if you're not going to make your own pastry, I just use Aldi puff pastry, top and bottom. I tried um, in the single pie maker, I sometimes will use short crust in the bottom and puff on the top. But honestly, unless you're an absolute pastry snob. expert and yeah, snob, connoisseur, whatever, I don't think it matters all that much for pretty much ordinary type pies and quiches and things if it's something particularly special like the caramel pie has to be a short crusty type pastry so i would probably make that pastry to put in here rather than rely on the bought one but i guess it's up to you either works and you can do that you can do short crust on the base and puff on the top but i just use puff it saves having lots of open packets of pastry hanging around the freezer and really you get with the little pie maker you get two tops and two bases out of one sheet of pastries so that's not so bad I just dry i eat pies for the feeling yeah i actually if it's good good pastry if you find a pie with a good pastry the pastry is worth it um okay if short on pastry you can use yeah, you can use phyllo, you can use bread, you can use mountain bread, you can use wraps, you can use um, tortillas, um, whatever you've got. If you want to do bread bread cases, take the crusts off, roll them thin with a rolling pin, then press them in. That works well too. Mountain bread is a really good pastry base. Um, if your filling is something light like egg, egg quiche type things if it's going to be a heavier filling use two sheets like you would with phyllo lots excuse me lots of options um hello june okay so uh, all right okay guys so there you go pineapple upside down cake with our oven and lots of other options. I'll post the recipe for you um, on the Cheapskates Club website. If you've enjoyed my show, please give me a thumbs up in the box below. If you haven't already subscribed, please do, um, just so that you don't miss a show. Hopefully we will be back on Thursday. I seem to have survived this, this long, okay, without falling in a heap, wheezing and groaning. So that will be good. Um, do you use syrup or anything for moisture or is the cake moist enough <laughs> oh Jenny Lee the I nah, I don't use a syrup the cake's fine like that as I said if you want to really jazz it up just put a blob of cream next to it or if you're going to serve it hot put some ice cream next to it would be nice but it's fine the way it is, I, I think, anyway. You might find differently. The trick is to just remember, set your, set your timer and then for the 10 minutes, when it buzzes, unplug it, leave the lid down for the five minutes, then take it out. Now, this stays hot for quite a long time. So if you've got little people in the house, just make sure they understand that even the outside gets very hot. So be aware of that. And otherwise, it's great. Ha! Huh, Maureen's making pancakes. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, cream or ice cream. Ice cream would be good if it was hot with ice cream. Mm, nice. Good dessert. All righty. So, all righty. Okie dokie. So, folks, I will go. Thank you so much for joining me again. Or well, coming back anyway. Hopefully I'm over my whatever. And I can um, keep talking without running out of breath. I shall see you all on Thursday. All right. Yep. Yep. First I had to stop and think what day it is because here I am cooking and it's not even Thursday. It's Tuesday. Thank you again for joining me. Don't forget the thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. And I shall see you on Thursday. Bye.